welcome. Should we talk about psychology? Today I want to talk about gestures. So like gestures, the hand motions, usually hand motions, that accompany language. I started thinking about how interesting gestures were because gestures usually show up before language does. So like in very young childhood, usually gestures show up early to be able to communicate before children can actually speak. But then they don't go away. Like we had, it's, I could sort of like imagine a scenario where we would use gestures to communicate until we have language and then the gestures would kind of fade out. But that is not what happens. Gestures show up early and then they just are part of language forever. And so I just, I've always wanted to sort of like learn more, I guess. So I'm using this opportunity, I'm using this video to like learn more about gestures. I'll go ahead and say this. I am what we would call not a linguist. I have my, I am a developmental psychologist, um, but language development is not my specialty, but it's always so fascinating. And anytime we talk about language, like I always feel like this is so complicated. Language is so complicated. And it's so fascinating that we are all so good at it. And yet, it, like we, I don't know, it's like we never step back and are like, we're doing some pretty awesome stuff in the language department. This is amazing. But it's so natural to us that it's like we don't even see it that way. So like, okay, okay, before we even get into gestures. Anytime you're talking, like say you're having a conversation, You've got like, what, two seconds to come up with an idea? That idea, you have to then attach to words. You have to find the right words to express it. Those words have to be ordered in a specific way, and there are rules. And yet we do it. We do it. We do it in like one second. That's very impressive. Now tack on. Now tack on. Not only do we do that. Not only can we sort of like get our ideas in a semi-presentable manner uh, to be able to express them to somebody else who can understand them, but we also gesture at the same time. And like, I don't know about you, but usually I don't really think about my gestures very much. I am 100% thinking about them right now. And in all honesty, I do kind of think about them a lot um, because they do come up in my job. But in general, in general, when I'm just out and about in my life, I really don't think about gestures that much, whether I'm using them or like observing them. It's all just very natural for us. Um, so anyway, I guess that was like, my language is very fascinating. Language is fascinating. Um, so let's just focus on gestures now. Gestures are very much a part of language. Um, I always hesitate to say anything is universal because the world is big. Um, but I think we can say pretty common, right? Gestures are pretty common, pretty commonly used in language. Um, and they usually like emphasize parts of speech. Uh, there's different types. There's different types of gestures. Some of them can stand alone. Like they're so well known that language isn't really required to like if I was like, you know what that means. I don't, it's common enough of a gesture that like we don't have to have language to explain it. So that can happen. Um, but usually like they can't stand alone. Usually gestures can't stand on their own. So like if I just went, not enough information for you. That's not enough information for you to know what I mean. The language has to be there. And so then the gesture just like sort of, highlight part of that information, I guess. I guess that's what it is. Uh, so usually they can't stand alone. Sometimes though they are, they're like almost required. Um, so like if I was gonna go get my haircut and I say like, I want my haircut to here. Like this is pretty much required information. Um, 
in theory, I think I could try to explain it in words, but I think it would be best. I think it would be best to just use a gesture. Um, so some gestures like that pointing, I guess. I don't know if it's always required, but if I say like, I think we parked that way, then like you kind of need that information to understand. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of some different types of gestures, but usually they do sort of like just emphasize or like highlight some aspect of speech. So the next question kind of becomes, or at least as I saw it when I was researching this for this video, um, are gestures helpful? Like, are they helpful in communication? And it looks like yes, which I will kind of hope. Like my, my hunch is to think, they must be beneficial. We're using them all the time. If they weren't helpful, we would have stopped using gestures long ago. But we don't really know that until we go in and look at the data. So are gestures beneficial? And it looks like yes. And so there, um, before I say that, before I say it looks like yes, I need to say this. There's really two sides to this question. Um, are gestures helpful for the listener? So like when we're conveying information, is it easier to understand when we use gestures than when we don't? Is it like easier to comprehend? That's like one side of the question. And the other side is like, are they helpful for the speaker? Like does using gestures help us in some way? Both look like yes, um, but the answer to both, because it's psychology and people are complicated and everything is complicated, um, the answers are complicated, but it does look like yes. So let's break that apart. First, let's talk about are gestures helpful for the listener? Like, do they help people comprehend what we are expressing, what we're communicating? And in general, it looks like yes. And overall, it's a medium effect size overall, but but it's fair. It's fair. Um, so they do appear to help people understand what we're communicating a bit. But it depends on like the type of information slash the type of gesture. So some some like information, some types of information just lend themselves to gestures better. Um, so like if we're talking about shape, if I say it's like it's a square, like that really lends itself to a gesture really nicely. Um, spatial relationships, like saying something is underneath something else, that lends itself to gestures very well. Um, so like shape is good. And uh, I forgot to say this. I think of these as tips. If anybody's looking for tips to like how to use their gestures better, these are the tips. Um, so like shapes work well, um, sort of like spatial information works well, and also like motor behaviors. And motor behaviors are another one where like imagine if you were trying to explain to somebody how to use a hammer. Like sure, you could you could use words. You could. Or you could just go, it's like this. You just go like this and then that's it. So motor behaviors, I assume because gestures are motor behaviors, lend themselves nicely to to gestures. Anyway, how beneficial gestures are, it does kind of depend on what's being expressed. Certain things abstract ideas, you know, something like color. Those are just, there's just not, gestures just don't seem to help all that much. Okay. Also, also, another sort of like way gestures can be more beneficial is if the information that's in the gesture is like not part of the speech. And so they call these in the literature like redundant gestures versus non-redundant gestures. So 
I'll give an example. So this is an example. I, there, this is a gesture I use all the time in class um, when I tell students to um, do assignments that are like they're easy. They're like a reading assignment. I say like it's easy money. It's easy money. Don't forget about that easy money. That's redundant. That's just the gesture means money and what I'm saying is money. So really the gesture doesn't add all that much information. In a non-redundant gesture, and this is not my original idea. I will make sure to reference whoever um, said this originally, but it's such a great example of non-redundant information. Uh, but like, okay, so if I approach you, I just walked out of a room and I said like, ugh, it's rough in there. This is extra information <laughs> that, is, that is very helpful for you to understand what is going on. But I didn't actually say anything about smell or odor. I just conveyed it with my gesture. So that's like non-redundant. Like that's adding more information that I didn't actually say. So gestures for like motor behavior, spatial relationships, shape, shape is a good one, and gestures that convey more information than is just in the speech. Those are more beneficial. Now, are gestures helpful for the speaker? I think yes. I think, okay. And so, okay. So I'm not 100% sure on this. But what I was seeing was really interesting. It really, it really looks like gestures do help the speaker, but like kind of in ways that I didn't predict. To me, it looked like gesturing helps the speaker themselves like understand the concept better and it helps them like retain the information better so it didn't look to me as much like it translates into like it helps language i think this is fascinating that like gestures might help us understand concepts better i started to think this might relate to like when we we instructors um, tell students like a good way to learn is to teach someone else that we learn well when we teach others and I was thinking this might be part of that that not only when we teach others uh, it helps us learn because we like you have to get your thoughts in order to be able to try to like explain the information to someone else um, but what if gestures are part of that? That like within that sort of like explaining this to somebody else, we're also starting to use gestures more than we would if we were just like sitting down and reading through the material. And that that can then help us understand and retain information better. I think that's very cool. I think that's a very cool finding. Um, so yeah, there's another tip. That's another sort of like tip, how to use gestures in life. Um, if you want to understand something, try to walk through it with gestures. See if it helps. I don't know. I don't know if that's really rock solid advice. I might be sort of like taking the research further than it really can go. Unknown. That's unknown. Um, but I don't know. I think gestures are cool. Uh, I do think they're probably important they seem helpful so that's uh that's all i got that's pretty much all that i know about gestures if i missed something cool though uh let me know if you know something cool about gestures or language development in general if there's other things about language that you think are cool um let me know we'll see see if we can talk about them otherwise um Thank you for sticking, sticking with it to the end, and I hope to see you sometime.